It's craft and lore wallet review time. I've awoken from my weekend uh, NyQuil induced coma to feel no better than I did the last time I made a video. So hopefully I can make it through this video without my voice leaving me. Um, but for the craft and lore wallet, the reason I chose craft and lore to do for my next wallet review is this wallet is about as rugged, this company is about as rugged and manly and um, handmade as you get. And the reason I wanted to do this is instead of just judging wallets on a scale of one to 10 or um, basing them off of each other and trying to decide which one's better, um, I want to do it a little bit more quantifiable, a little bit more in-depth, a little more three-dimensional reviews. So I want to start establishing kind of a graph to go off of where the y-axis will be low quality to high quality, and then we'll go refined styling all the way to rugged styling. So that way, when we do a diff when we do these different wallet reviews, we can plot these different companies on this graph and judge them based on a few different variables instead of just good or bad or one to 10, you know? So for instance, when we did the $10 Amazon wallet, it's gonna be low on the quality and then um, a little bit more to the refined side. And then Bellroy, we're gonna be a little bit higher on the quality side and a little bit more to the refined side. The reason I chose Craft and Lore to do next and to kind of introduce this graph is because they're so rugged, it's gonna give us the other end of the spectrum. So, so you've got this point to go off of for future wallets, so when we're judging them, um, and maybe next time we do something on the really high end and um, refined side, so that you have some, some points to base everything else off of. That being said, let's get to the Craft and Lore wallet. And I also need a name for this grid here, so let me know what you guys think we should call it. Um, I was thinking like wallet review graph, but that's pretty boring. Okay, while I'm opening this up and putting some cards into it and showing you how it works functionally, let's go through some of the details of the wallet, starting with the price. This is their insider wallet and it ranges between $65 to $75, depending on which leather you choose. I chose the natural Chrome XL from Horween. I love Chrome XL. We use it in our camera harnesses and I just love it. It's all stitched by hand, which is a better way than um, machine sewing. It's stronger and these guys guarantee their stitching for life, which is really cool. And this wallet has four pockets and on the website it says it holds 12 cards. And a lot of people ask me in the other videos about wallets where I was reviewing the Bellroy wallet and the Amazon wallet, like they're, they're asking me like, why are you reviewing wallets you should just be like reviewing your own wallets and pushing your own wallets. Um, and a wise man once told me, a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. And that's kind of how I feel about these wallet reviews and these um, talking about other people's products is, you know, if you like my style, you're gonna buy my wallet. If you like their style, you're gonna buy their wallet. So it's just gonna build the leather working community and introduce people to new companies. And it's more fun to be able to talk to about all these other companies and show what other people are doing and, and show you different aspects of leather working and kind of show you the difference on that scale of our, our wallet review graph um, to give you some more uh, points of views on different types of wallets than it is just pretending like I'm the only one that makes wallets. Now that we've kind of looked at the wallet, opened it up, tried some cards in it, let's talk about some of the design features and um, design choices that might help us grade it on that graph and um, give you some insight into what type of things we're gonna be looking at moving forward with wallets. The first one is we're gonna look at is burnishing. So usually a more refined wallet is gonna have a ton of burnishing and even have a mirror finish on the edge. Um, a more rugged wallet isn't gonna have any burnishing on the edge. The Craft and Lure wallet has no burnishing um, and a lot of the leather burnishing Nazis out there will have a fit about not having burnished edges. To me, it's not a big deal because as soon as you start using your wallet, all that, that mirror finish on your edge is gonna go away anyway. They're not spending time burnishing it. So instead of charging you $20 more to spend half an hour burnishing this wallet, they are uh, passing that savings on to you and not burnishing the edges. So. You know, you get that rugged look and the price savings. Next is the thread size. So thread size is another thing where 
the more fine and small the thread size, the more refined it's gonna look. The bigger the thread size, the more chunky it is, the more rugged and manly it's gonna look. And Craft and Lore uses really thick thread. I, my guess is this is probably a one millimeter to 1.2 millimeter thread, which is a stronger, thicker thread. It's gonna last longer than a really thin thread. And along with that is the, the stitch length. So basically the distance between each hole on the stitching is gonna give it a different look. The tighter the stitch length, maybe like a two or three millimeter stitch length is gonna look more refined and more finished. A bigger, wider stitch length is gonna be, give it that more heavy stitching look. This wallet stitch length is around seven millimeters, which is huge. And that's another one of those things where instead of having twice the stitching at like three millimeters, they're spending half the time stitching this wallet by having less stitches. And that's another reason why they're able to sell this wallet for a better price. Next thing is the leather type. Uh, we kind of talked about this earlier. This is the Chrome Excel, natural Chrome Excel from Horween. It's a top grain leather. It may be not as rugged as a full grain leather, like the Dublin, where you can see all the scars and imperfections. You still see some in a full grain leather, like this little, probably it's a bug bite right there, and maybe some scars right there where the cow got into the barbed wire fence or something. And then to leather thickness, Usually the thinner the leather, the more refined it's gonna look, the more compact and tight your wallet is gonna be versus the thicker the leather is, it's gonna be a little bit more chunky and look a little bit more handmade and rugged. So the thickness of leather they use in this is right around two millimeters, which is pretty thick. For the Bellroy wallet, they use about one millimeter, so it's literally twice the thickness of leather. And what you get from a thicker leather is, it's gonna be a thicker wallet, but it's also gonna be a stronger wallet. For design features and just overall design, this does, the, the design of this wallet is really, really simple. The construction's really simple, really straight, simple lines, and um, simple, just a really simple wallet. Let's, uh, let's cut this thing open and kind of lay it out and see how, if there, see if there's anything else in here that we're missing and see the overall design of the wallet laid out. Now that we got it fully torn apart, we can kind of see everything in an exploded view. No surprises, really. There's a certain elegance and simplicity, and this is about that the finest definition of that. I think it's a really great wallet. It would last through a nuclear winter. I'm a big fan of this style of wallet. I, I like the rugged feel. If I was to give this an official rating or an official place on our scale here, our soon to be named graph, I would put it right about in this area where it's pretty close to the highest quality. You know, they're using Horween leather, wax polyester or wax nylon thread, um, hand, uh, hand sewn, and maybe not the most rugged because there's definitely some handmade stuff out there that looks more rugged, maybe not in a positive way. So I'd put it about right in this area. Great wallet, great company, awesome guys. They got some of the best style in the game. Go check out their website and their Instagram. I'll put their all their information in the description below. And yeah, consider liking and subscribing because I love I would love to keep doing these videos. I think it's so fun. I love seeing other creators and makers like myself and what they what they're creating and seeing it really in in hand and seeing it in a really in-depth review. But the problem is these videos like it's not as SEO friendly and it doesn't have the mass appeal as like a Timberland boot or a Doc Martin boot, boot or like Vans. So I really need your help on these videos to get enough views and likes and subscribes, subscriptions from them in order to keep doing them. So please consider liking and subscribing because it makes a huge difference. So thank you guys for your support and we got our first sponsor. How cool is that? Next video is going to have our very first sponsor. So thank you guys so much. And we're going to be able to do some cool stuff. And um, <clears throat> I apologize. <clears throat> I apologize for Toaster not being here. He went into surgery today to get five teeth removed. And he is 
He's a little out of it, so I didn't bring him to the shop today. He's recovering at home. And um, for the toasty, the toaster fans out there, the toasty gang is some people in the comment section named themselves. I'll put the video of him trying to climb the stairs right here for the outro, but see ya.